Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Awan of the Associate Vice Chair of Education in the Department of Diagnostic Radiology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. I want to talk today about COVID-19 and children. This is a topic that has been getting a lot of press, and there are a lot of different opinions and ideas about COVID-19 and children. So I want to talk about how I feel about COVID-19 and children. And I want to start with some basic CDC data. This is all available online. At, if you go to cdc.gov, all of this data is readily apparent uh, on the website. And as of January 22nd of this year, there have been 883 COVID-19 deaths in children under the 18 years of age in the United States. 280 of those deaths occurred in children that are zero to four years of age and 603 occurred in children that are five to 18 years of age. And while this only represents 0.1% of all COVID-19 deaths in the United States, a very small fraction compared to adults, this is alarming. And I hope that everyone understands that this is an alarming number because children shouldn't be dying, right? They're healthy, their overall, their immune systems are excellent. And we should never accept any deaths, quite frankly, from a disease that is preventable. And I want everyone to understand that. So despite the fact that people downplay you know, children in hospitalizations and deaths that occur in children. This is an alarming number. 2,868 children from the ages of zero to four have been hospitalized due to COVID thus far, and 3,841 children from the ages of four to 17 have been hospitalized due to COVID. So again, the numbers are much smaller compared to adults, but it still exists, right? And they shouldn't be hospitalized, especially for a disease that could be prevented. Now, currently at the end of January, on a daily basis, there are more than 760 children that are less than 18 years of age that are being hospitalized daily. This is the largest number since the start of the pandemic. So even including the Delta variant, which is deemed to be more aggressive, so to speak, than the Omicron, there are more children being hospitalized now than any other time during this global pandemic. I wanna show some imaging of what COVID can look like in children. And, you know, th there's a spectrum of findings, obviously, right? It can be, you know, very mild where the chest x-rays are totally normal to cases that are much more severe. But I want to give some sense of what the spectrum can look like. So this is a seven-year-old who presented in August of 2021. So during the Delta surge, presented with a febrile seizure. And if you look at the x-ray, it looks pretty mild, right? Pretty negative, right? This is the heart right here. This black area here is the right lung. This black area here is a left lung. You know, there's certainly no focal opacity to suggest pneumonia. There's a little bit of congestion central here along the hilar region. The hilum is where the airway and the vessels, you know, come out of the mediastinum and go into the lung. Maybe a little bit of fullness and vascular congestion, but otherwise the lung looks pretty good, right? And this is a patient that tested positive for COVID-19. So again, you know, not dramatic findings. This is a 14 year old who presented in December with a cough. This is during the Omicron surge. And this x-ray is, is completely normal, right? This is a, a nice view of the heart. The right lung is nice and black, looks well aerated, as does the left lung. There's no focal opacity to suggest pneumonia, uh, pretty much a negative or a benign appearing chest x-ray. But it's not always negative, right? And I wanna show this case, a 17-year-old who presented in January of 2021, so last year, right? And then presented three months later. So you can take a look. This is a central line here going into the right heart. This is the heart here. There is some opacity here at the right lung base, suggesting a pneumonia. And three months later, notice that there's much more white density in the lung, in the, in the aerated lung. So there's much more pneumonia or burden of disease that has occurred three months later in this patient with COVID pneumonia. And not only is there much more pneumonia, there's a, this patient has required a tracheostomy. So this patient has required respiratory treatment to breathe properly. Uh, and this is a problem, right? You know, especially in a 17 year old, no 17 year old should have this dramatic findings, you know, especially three months later where the lung looks much worse than it did when the patient came in, right? So, you know, despite the fact that the vast majority of patients who are kids have, you know, normal x-rays, there are some that get really affected by COVID pneumonia. And I want everyone to realize that and understand that. Now, of course, this patient wasn't vaccinated because the vaccine wasn't offered during January of 2021. But, you know, with that said, it can still affect patients that are or are not vaccinated. So the take home points here really are COVID-19 exists in children, although it may be a small percentage of total hospitalizations and total deaths. It's still a reality that I want everyone to understand. We should never, never accept any number of hospitalizations or deaths in our kids. This thing can be prevented if we vaccinate, if we wear masks. Uh, this is something 
that despite the fact that there's, you know, the numbers are low, there should be no cases of COVID-19 in children, in fact. And, you know, our heart goes out to the 883 families who have lost kids because of this, right? So, you know, always keep that in mind and keep that uh, uh, in front focus. 16% of kids that are age 5 to 11 are vaccinated and slightly more than half who are age 12 to 17 are vaccinated. Obviously, the Pfizer vaccine is available for kids who are, you know, more than five years of age, right? The Moderna and the Johnson Johnson are not available for kids, but, you know, we can do better as society. 16% of kids 5 to 11 are vaccinated. We can get that number up to protect our kids. We have to do our part. There should be no shame in having our kids vaccinated, asking them to wear masks. We should do all we can to protect our kids who don't deserve to be hospitalized and certainly don't deserve to die from this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much for your attention.